Well, good morning. Look at that. Look at that unfinished, unfinished case. Unfinished case, but look inside. <gasps> There's plastic still on the uh, acrylic that needs to come off. That should be see-through. Uh, it's not closing properly. This is the beta kit for the case. I'm still printing, as you can see. There's gaps. None of the electronics are inside here yet. Um, the whole base underneath, I'll go through later, hasn't been printed yet. And look at that, on the floor, not the power plug, that is Corian chips. They're chips. They're my first chips. First chips. What? Oh, yeah, that door doesn't work very well yet. First chips. Oh, dirty in here. Very dirty. Okay, let's take a few steps back. <laughs> So, um, how's that for a really big case slash enclosure? It's not finished yet. I can't even get far enough back. I just took it downstairs myself on this trolley because I built it upstairs and completely wrecked my back. And then I couldn't get it up on here. So I went next door to one of the guys, Graydon. He's a builder. He came in and gave me a hand lifting it up. So I've got a, a bit of MDF, 16 millimeter MDF here. Before everyone freaks out about MDF, um, I've given it three coats of polyurethane, which kind of stinks. And so that's now sealed. Like if it gets oil or coolant or anything on it, not a big deal. Right now I'm leaving it like this and I'm gonna put the machine in there. But um, there's a whole base, what's called the basement for this case that I still need to print all the parts for and assemble. And this case sits on top. And then it's got rammed gullies and a, a chip chute that goes down the middle. So you can easily get, oh, when I say easily, you can potentially get all your chips going into this gully down the back, and then you've got a way of getting rid of it, which sits under the machine. So I still have that to build. Um, I've got a heavy duty steel workbench coming. It's on casters, but it's like a full on massive heavy thing. So this is only temporarily sitting on. My very first thing I made when I started my YouTube channel was this workbench and I still use it, but it's not stable enough. So it's just sitting on there for now. We're gonna, when I say we, myself and Peter Homan, uh, Peter's coming over tomorrow to give me a hand just with the machine. We're gonna move it into here and I've still got doors to build, but I'm still 3D printing stuff for it. Once it's in here, we're going to check a few things and then do first chips. Hey everybody, got Milo temporarily sitting in the case that I'm still building. Got um, 3D touch probe in there. I've got some coralline plastic clamped in here. I've got a uh, fusion job that's been set up just to cut basic shapes, a pocket and some other stuff, cutaway stuff, just for a first test. Haven't cut anything on this before. Uh, I've currently got just my uh, packing computer over there that I'm gonna be running it from. And I've got Peter Homan here, who does not wanna be on video. So, hi Peter. <laughs> Good. Uh, he's been helping me with all this stuff. So um, I'm gonna get it ready to do a first cut and I'm sure it's gonna be a disaster. Right now going to probe this corner over here to get the height of the bed. I don't have any lighting inside the case right now. It's a black case so it makes it dark in here. I'm gonna put some 12 volt RGBW LEDs in there. But anyway, probing, probing. Okay, we're about to probe the corner of the workpiece. So, go for it, Pe. It works out the height. Now you can see through the corners. So this is in full mode, where it does two points per side. It already knows the, um, the size of the workpiece. It's 160 by 80 in this case, so it just needs to do this corner. Let's do it now. And then I'll move over to the front. And once this is done, I'll take the probe out and put a 6mm single flute bit in there and make some fresh chips. OK, 
Okay, the bit is in and it is now measuring the tool height. Okay, boys and girls, this is what we've been waiting for. First cut, uh, what could possibly go wrong? I'm gonna be standing close to the emergency stop button. Peter's gonna be hitting the go button. This is gonna make a mess everywhere. I know it is, whatever, but um, you ready, Peter? We're gonna do it? Yep, let's go. Okay, let's go. Whoa, spindles up. And we're done. First cut. Wah. <laughs> Hexagon, a square and a circle, just really to check the tolerances. Uh, we know we're gonna be out because the probe wasn't really, the 3D probe it wasn't um, centered, concentric, whatever but that's looking pretty good. And uh, wow, I'm impressed. I have a mill, everyone. I have a mini mill. Might even finish it one day. Case, lighting, doors, vacuum, base, all the things. But um, there you go. That is very, very cool. And here it is, folks, the final cut. Oh, look at the state of my desk. <laughs> it's completely scratched it up, building the Arctos robot and Milo on here. There it is. And it cut really well. Better than I hoped it would on the first cut, considering it was me that built the machine. Looking forward to experimenting with aluminium. That was the main reason I got the machine. Yeah, I mean, the circle is a circle. And the... Even though I know that the tolerances are slightly out, the measurements are slightly out because of the that probe not being concentric, they're, um, the X and Y are correct on these. Like the size of proportions of these are correct, but they're just, you know, they're, I think within point 
one millimeter out. So that's supposed to be 30 by 30 millimeters and it's 30.1 by 30.11 or something. So it's pretty close. Definitely good enough for anything I need to make and manufacture for myself. But it'd be nice to work out how to calibrate that probe. So it'll actually be 30 and 30. Anyway, that's it. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed finally having a mill <laughs> and how excited I got when it first started cutting. Thanks. Catch you all later. Don't forget to like. Bye.